What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. Incredibly excited to bring this one to you because this is for the hustlers, this is for the door knockers. The ones that are putting the boots on the ground wanting to scale their business with active prospecting in the trenches. I'm bringing on Eric Haas, who scaled to $500,000 GCI per year just using door knocking in a luxury market down there in California. So I'm really excited. Eric's gonna be talking about his script, how he got into door knocking, his follow-up system, and how he converted a ton of leads through his creative door knocking strategy. So we're gonna break it all down for you. This is gonna be one that's gonna help take your business to the next level. And I'm incredibly excited to share you guys some of the innovative strategies that both of us use back when I was door knocking and what he's doing, but also now what he's doing with video marketing and how he's incorporated that into his business to take it to the next level. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode where we have on a super special guest today, Eric Haas, who's become a good buddy of mine, but is an absolute beast down in the California market selling these dream multi-million dollar listings. But one thing that you can see behind him, which is why I gravitated very much towards Eric, is the fact that we both built our businesses on door knocking and still to this day, Eric is beasting out the doors, getting multi-million dollar listings. So I wanna chat a bit about what Eric has done with the door knocking world, how he was able to leverage this to build his business to a very successful level, which I'll let him explain. And then also what he's now doing to transition that into an, a more traditional, actually modern marketing strategy that we're helping him with here at the Wolfpack. So Eric, what's up brother? Super excited to have you on. And uh, why don't you give yourself a brief little introduction because you've killed it, man. And I think you don't give yourself enough credit. Oh, thanks, Mike. Thank you so much for having me on, man. I'm super stoked to be here and have this opportunity with you. A little bit about me. I mean, I won't go too far into it, but I'm a Cali native, born and raised, San Fernando Valley, living on the west side of, of LA right now in Mar Vista. And that's kind of pretty much where I do my business on the coastal markets. Um, I actually went to college local as well at Claremont McKenna, uh, played soccer my entire life. That was kind of where I kind of got my discipline, my thick skin. I had a coach that was total hard ass. Um, he coached some professional teams too, man. And, but I mean, he didn't, he didn't slack for anything. So that really built me up. And then from there, I obviously went to college. We were ranked number four in the country while I was playing. And from there, instead of getting into like any government or business management thing that, you know, my, my degree was basically insinuating, uh, I jumped into the music industry. And um, my first job actually was with the first manager of the doors, which was pretty epic. I was 18. I was kind of an internship, just learning my way around it. Uh, and then I jumped to Virgin Records, not the mega store, but the record label. There was one in Beverly Hills headquarters. And I got to work on projects from a public relations standpoint with NERD, the Gorillas, Lenny Kravitz. So it was pretty epic, really fun time. And then it just continued to progress. And I saw myself getting into music management. And I found myself at a company known as The Firm. And they started out pretty much as music. They bought out Michael Ovitz, uh, say like early 2000s. And from there, you know, it just went on. And I find myself got getting out of there uh, at the right time. Things were changing. Uh, Napster was a major presence. iTunes was just on the forefront. And uh, I saw real estate as a great opportunity. My parents had been in it for five years. And they're like, why don't you give it a go? You know, it gives you flexibility. And, you know, you can really see what you can do for yourself in it. And so I did. And I started with a team at first just to kind of get the ropes and understand everything. I had my parents in the background, don't get me wrong. But this allowed me like full you know, firsthand experience. I was handling all the marketing. I was doing all the open houses on the weekends and caravans, all the showings that went along with it. I mean, my days off were Wednesday and Thursday, everything else was just full on. And I was working for, you know, a completely different team. So after about, you know, seven, eight months, I was like, got my license and this is really not for me. I want to get out on my own. And, you know, that was totally cool. I joined Cool Banker, which was the same company. My parents were out in the Valley. I joined Cool Banker Brantwood and got my start there. And, um, you know, I didn't have a huge marketing budget, bro. And, you know, I didn't have a huge sphere either. I was 25 years old. And so I really had to prove myself. And also there was no social media platforms to speak of or work with at that time. So, you know, I was going off of what I could do, you know, by putting my best self forward. And that was not on a postcard because I didn't have the marketing budget. Some of my competition was pending, you know, six figures a month just on sending out mailers. And, to me, you know, while it was a really hard hurdle to jump over to get to that comfort level and confidence to hit the door, um, it's paid dividends, as you know. And as I've shared before with you, and you know, I've been doing this for 15 years, and 
you know, I'm really just starting to scratch the surface of social media. So in the 15 years that I've been doing this, you know, I've gotten to be, you know, top 8% of my company. And I've been that way through multiple companies. I started at Cowell Banker, moved to Telus, which was a boutique company, then moved to a uh, Partners Stretch, which was a boutique company as well. Moved to Douglas Ellen when they came to Beverly Hills and did that because the manager was there that I knew. And I also was friends with the Altman brothers prior to us ever getting into real estate uh, business ourselves. So I thought it'd be a great move. And Douglas Elliman ended up buying Talus out and found me back in the same spot I was again. But, you know, back to the door knocking, man. I mean, that, that was my bread and butter. Like that's how I built my business. I didn't have a sphere. 25 year olds don't have spheres at least that point in time. And, you know, this was the best way that I could spend my time and build that trust factor, that face-to-face -face rapport with people who, you know, were going to potentially list their, you know, multi-million dollar homes with me, a kid potentially. So I felt like it offered value with that face-to-face -face and building that, you know, trust essence that we're all looking for with our clients. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, we resonate on the same path because that's exactly why I started door knocking back in the day. And we kind of started around a similar age where I didn't know anybody. I had no marketing budget. I had no experience. I didn't know what to do, but I knew that if I wanted to control how many people I got in front of every single day, I could do that with door knocking. Uh, there was a lot of objection. There was a lot of rejection. There was a lot of fear, but it's something that made you a better communicator over time because you start to have to think quick on your feet. And I think it's, it really helps you develop the communication skills that you need for anything in life, um, even outside of business. So one thing that I wanted to get into is things like, you know, what was the hardest part about door knocking when you got started? Was it different? Because a lot of people think that now that you're in a luxury price point, that suddenly it's a different world. A lot of people see over a million dollars. It must be so hard to door knock. I can't fathom knocking these doors because they might be super successful people. So breaking it down, what was it like door knocking in these million dollar areas? What was kind of the reception and the objection? And what kind of script did you use when you started approaching those areas? Absolutely, Mike. I, I actually started in Westwood, which was an area that I actually lived closer to when I first started out. And while that in that area already was a million dollar neighborhood when I started that in 2005. But the fact of the matter is, is I still remember the first very first door that I hit. And I was sitting there, I was like, please don't answer. Please don't answer the door. Please, please. Oh, crap. Crap. I'm supposed to say something now. And they're just staring at me. And I'm like, uh, Eric, cool banker. Here's an update, bye. And I was gone and I was off to the next one. But you know what, I got it under my belt. And yeah, the next few ones were still difficult and not the easiest of things to do. But you know, I've alluded to this in, in one of my door knocking videos that I put out on YouTube as well as, you know, I go at door knocking with a completely different mentality than most people. I relate it to childhood experience and I love talking about this because, you know, it really breaks it down. It really makes it simple and it really gives people perspective that wow, I can really be doing trick-or-treating, Halloween, 24-7, 365, just without the costume, please. But you're trick-or-treating, but you're getting $50,000 checks, at least where I'm going. I mean, who cares where you're going? $5,000, $10,000? You know, where can you get that unless you're forking out a ton of money, you know, with prepay ads or, you know, monthly postcards? It's just, this is the easiest and cheapest way to do it and to establish rapport right from the get-go. And a lot of people will wonder, oh, what's the best time to go? Well, there really isn't a best time to go. It's all a matter of just being consistent about going, just getting out there and doing it. And they're going to also ask, well, how often should I go? Well, if you're not going to commit five times a week, don't do it. Five times a week for at least two years. When I started in 05, we were in a hot ass market in LA. I didn't get a deal for two years. In fact, the neighborhood I was door knocking was not where I got my first listing either. I got it off of an open house and I feel that, you know, door knocking is very much the same as an open house. You're meeting people for the first time. You obviously want to work with them, whether it's a buyer or seller. So I saw it as no different. And that's actually where I met my first uh, listing uh, appointment. And actually it's funny, a little side note back to the music industry. He was related to Dave Navarro. Oh my God. The world. But you know, you just got to get out there and do it. And with respect to luxury markets, like, you know, the only thing that's really changed up for me, is that now you have ring and you press that button and it feels weird and you know there's someone looking at you and you necessarily can't see them but you got to get past it you know because again it gets you a fifty thousand dollar check or a twenty thousand dollar check whatever your market is who cares 
if it pays you and they say, come on in, what do you got to lose? I mean, I've knocked on doors that say go away and have set appointments that week for that very house. So, you know, don't get put off by that, you know, and, and luxury doesn't mean shit, excuse my French, but it doesn't. It's just another zero on the price. You know, those people need to sell too. And nobody is coming to their door, I guarantee you most of the time, especially in a luxury market, say like Brentwood, where I've door knocked before. And guess what? Majority of them, you can't even get to the door. There's a big old fence in front of it and you're hitting the button and they're kind of shocked that you're there. But guess what? Majority of the time, they're so shocked that they actually respect it and appreciate the value that you're bringing to them. So don't ever look at it like you're bothering people because that's what everyone's going to tell you, especially agents in your office who don't do it. Do it. Because... I made over a half a million dollars last year and it was simply because of door knocking and the relationships that it opens as a result. Definitely. And, you know, a couple of things that I want to touch on there is the first thing is I even found with luxury neighborhoods that almost the objection is even less because they, because, you know, they had to do something to become successful and work pretty hard in most cases, they actually respect people that put the boots on the ground and working harder than most to hone in their craft. So I found that I actually got better reception from these areas that had wealthier people because they understood the hustle and respected it. Now, a couple of the things that I wanted to touch on too is, you know, even for me, I found when some agents are struggling to continue with the consistency that you mentioned, break down the math. If you get an average of $25,000 per check, if you end up getting a listing from door knocking, break it down and say, if you have the door knock, 200 homes or 250 homes and it ends up being you know a hundred dollars a door that you knock treat that as every knock is a hundred dollars and you're gonna surely make a lot more door knocking um effort if you start to break it down and realize every time you knock a door whether it's a yes or no is a hundred bucks in your pocket so i think it's framing it in a more powerful way now one thing that i'd love to ask is what was your script you know everybody has different scripts i find that there's scripts online that are down in the States that I found you're a bit more forward compared to the one that I crafted up here in Canada. That's a bit more lenient and nonchalant. Um, Everything can work well, but I'd love to know what worked well for you. I mean, to be honest, I've tried multiple different things, but one thing that I've just stayed very clear and simple with is hi, it's Eric Koss. I'm with eXp Realty. I'm stopping by with a housing update on Mar Vista, keeping you dialed in on what's going on with quarter one versus quarter four and just, stopping by to see if you've got any questions or any interest in moving anytime soon. And you know what, that's, that's the introduction. They've seen me so many times at Mike, I've done this for 15 years too, but this works for anybody because people don't want to feel like you're shoving it down their throat, but they also want to understand the reason why you're there. And the reason obviously is obviously I want to sell your house. If you have interest in doing that. Now that interest may lead to, Hey, you know what? Not my house, but guess what? My so-and-so just passed away in my family and they need an agent or I have an investment property, or I want to be an investor. So the conversation's gonna go where it's gonna go. And on many, many, most occasions, it's gonna be a simple thank you, no, I'm not interested. And you know what's a great thing to do is get their name, get their email address, and write them a handwritten note, just letting them know that you appreciated the time that they took to meet with you and have a short chat and that if they can ever think of anything that they need real estate oriented, that you are their number one guy. And if they need anything for their home, for that matter, you are the guy that they'll reach out to for vendors, anything to do with the neighborhood, lifestyle, what have you. You want to make it so that when you're speaking with them, you can speak not only professionally and expertly about the neighborhood and obviously what the numbers are doing, the average price per square foot, the median sales price, but you also want to be able to speak intelligently about what's going on in the neighborhood. Not only issues, but like what new restaurants, what's transitioning and changing? What are the trends that I see coming in? Because honestly, I've heard through the grapevine that they want to make Venice Boulevard look like Ocean Avenue in Santa Monica. A lot of people don't know that, but you know, when they hear that, it's like a lot of people think dollar signs because that's just going to bring values up even more so with this mecca of a road bringing everyone into the beach that's now glitz and glamour like the rest of you know the west side really is becoming so i think that's amazing man and you know i love that you said at the end of the day i know uh, but if you can get their information that's really powerful and that's kind of a great segue into what i wanted to ask next is a lot of people struggle then with the conversion so you know you get to the door you get some information or you maybe don't get some information are you re-knocking similar areas or if you do get their information how are you following up with these people to hopefully 
eventually convert because we all know that it takes multiple touch points to convert. So did you have a strategy with mailers? Were you hitting them with social ads? Were you re-following up or giving them a call? What was kind of your follow-up strategy? So that's a great question. Um, just to break it down, like Nipsey says, it's a marathon, but when there's an opportunity, you got to sprint for it. And the opportunities present themselves during that marathon. And it's whether you take advantage of it and you're confident enough to take advantage of it as well. Look, I look at it from many different perspectives. I'm obviously, I want to meet the person. I want to get their contact information because I'm going to be at their door at least four to six times a year. I'm going to be there every single quarter and I want to be there at least two additional times just to remain top of mind. Now I can do that even more so now by implementing the social media aspects, which we'll get into and the reason why I joined the Wolfpack in the first place. But, you know, to be able to hit those people that builds rapport and to see that they're coming, I'm coming through on a regular basis. You don't want to be random. You don't want to be sporadic about where you're hitting. You want to pick a farm, be smart about the farm, dial in your resources accordingly you know, with a newsletter, because you always want to drop and leave something behind. And, you know, again, you know, people think time is, you know, what time is supposed to go, there's no good time to go except the right time, which is now. But if you really want to put it in perspective, a lot of people don't want to be out past two or three o'clock in LA because traffic gets stupid. So if you think that that, you know, might help your psyche and confidence that you're going to have more people at the door, that's great. But when I take information down, I'm getting emails, I'm following up with eblast. You know, I'm trying to remain top of mind with that respect. I also drop off pumpkins to the neighborhood to take, remain top of mind as well. And I send personal letters to people just to touch base. I also keep a list of homes that, you know, look like they might be great for my builder clients. And I have a whole different approach for reaching out to them as well. Plus, I take note of every single brand new home that comes onto the market and sells because I want them to be in my, say, list of people I'm reaching out to because their market is completely different than the normal average medium price home that's in my market. And when I put out a market report necessarily for the whole area of Mar Vista, that doesn't really dial in what's happening in more of the newer construction or brand new construction. Because the cool thing about Mar Vista is, yeah, newer construction is flying off the market still because I have one off market going under contract now and still at crazy prices. But even the homes that are newer say, you know, within the four to five year range, even 10 year range, I've seen them start at like a million nine to 2010 and sell in 2020 for 3 million. So the market's still really strong for them and they need to understand as well what's going on in their particular niche because they are a niche within a neighborhood. And then you got to make sure you're dialed in on the neighborhood because there's sub neighborhoods within the neighborhood. I mean, Mar Vista alone has Mar Vista Knoll, Mar Vista Flats. You've got an area where you have Gregory Ains that are mid-century, which are only three or four streets. You have Westdale Truesdale, which is actually built by Truesdale, who created the Truesdale Estates in Beverly Hills. I mean, there's so much history that you have to be able to know, no matter what neighborhood you're going into. I think that's important is a lot of people don't take the time to learn their craft and it's, it ends up coming back to bite them because they'll get in front of a door and somebody will ask a question about maybe one of the sub markets that are in that neighborhood and they get caught off guard and they start, you know, biting their tongue because they actually haven't done the research. And when you can answer quickly with the drop of a dime and have it with authority, that really shows that you're actually an expert and you're a good value resource to the neighborhood. So I think that's really powerful. And I love that you've taken that approach. Now, Guys, I was going to ask Eric what he brings while door knocking, but what I don't want to do is steal his thunder. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to link his video below and comment below if you want access to this video. But it's a video where Eric breaks down on his YouTube channel exactly what he brings while door knocking. I think it's incredible. Um, and I urge you guys to go check that out. Also, make sure you subscribe to him because he's putting out in incredible consistent content that's going to be providing a lot of value to you guys. But now that we've got to the point where you're door knocking, but you're also transitioning to a more modern style to blend that in with door knocking because we also understand that door knocking does take time. And when you're trading time for money, it's not as scalable as doing vice versa where you're trading money for time. So what are you doing now in order to blend modern new school with traditional old school in order to just beef up your prospecting and marketing efforts? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, for the past five years, you know, I've been dabbling with Instagram, Facebook, you know, I haven't put too much into LinkedIn, definitely did not do YouTube at all up until this year with you. Um, but really, it was a matter of finding the right collaborative team that I could 
you know, see myself aligning with where I didn't care if I was paying for it just so I knew that what I was paying for wasn't BS. And fortunately for you, Mike, I mean, you have validation through Andy Frizzella, who I follow his podcast. And I know that Andy doesn't mess with anybody who is BS. So when I saw that connection, like it was, it was instantaneous for me. And once I jumped on the social media mastermind call, I mean, I was just like, whoa, took me to a whole different playing level. And I knew that this was exactly what I was looking for because in five years, I've never even come across a brokerage that even knows how to dial that in other than saying, hey, you know what, best thing to do, 30 hashtags. Make sure you do your 30 hashtags. Come on, guys, that, that's a joke. That's so archaic. So like the social, I mean, meeting you guys and coming into the social media mastermind, I mean, that was just the step in the right direction that I needed. Plus with your, with your high converting content, I mean, that company just alone just really has me on YouTube. I mean, never would I thought in five years that I'd be finally on it and I'm on it and I'm, what, Mike, we're, we're 20 videos in almost and it's amazing and I'm feeling more comfortable, I'm feeling confident and it's because I know how to dial it in. It's not because I'm just on there spilling content, you know, with social media, you know, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, it's understanding it. It's understanding the SEO, the algorithm, the tag words, the keywords, all that that's integrated into it and if you're not doing it right, it's going to fall on deaf ears. So I knew, and I know that that's where real estate's going. And I've sold many a deal off of Facebook and Instagram, off market. In fact, the one that I sold, who knows where it came from. I've had 70, 80 leads just from Facebook ads for this particular property in Mar Vista that's going under contract this weekend off market. But, you know, I knew that it was something I had to add to my traditional. Look, I was doing everything the traditional broker was doing aside from mailers because I just don't believe in them. But you know, when it comes to listings, I'm the broker who sells them in two to three weeks. And it goes hand in hand with all the marketing I do, the videos that are like spot on that tell a story, not only of the house, but of the neighborhood as well, but also making sure everything's professional and that, you know, I'm first and foremost, the person that, I, you know, they get in, into contact with. But I knew that there is another element that I needed to, you know, get dialed in. And, and that was the social media platforms, because I knew that it could speak volumes to my business and put me in a place where I could actually scale. Because, look, I got into this business not to screw around. I, we all got in this business to make money, you know, and that's what led me to joining the Wolfpack, too, because, I mean, not only does EXP give such a great foundation, but it's, it's the movement within the brokerage that you're really signing up with. And if you're not aware of that, like that's what you have to be completely dialed in on as well before you make a move like you're making to you know, a cloud-based brokerage like EXP. Because the Wolfpack, like if I didn't know about it, EXP would never have been something I had even considered. But once you know, we talked, Mike and Connor, you know, the two of us, and hammered it out, and you explained not only like obviously the amazing – you know, multiple streams of income opportunities that are available, but how the back end movement is going to put me in a position where I'm going to have full access to understanding and making sure that every platform I have is dialed in and not only dialed in, but dialed in in a way that is scalable and getting return on that investment like everybody wants. You're, so you're not just like blindly throwing money out there. You know, you're really understanding the strategy aspect because there is a strategy to it. You can't just blindly do this. There is a lot, a lot that goes into it. And in fact, I still need help on one of my ads from you too. So, you know, I'm, I'm in a learning process too, and things are always changing. And guess what too? That's the brilliant thing about Wolfpack because they're ever keeping us up to speed. Instagram had a major thing drop too. And boy, I tell you, Wolfpack was on it like nobody's business. So, you know, that's, that's what I needed. And that's why I got so stoked and super excited. I mean, come on, you, you know, it took me like two days to make my decision to join up. So yeah. you know that, you know, it offered value. I know it offers value. Everyone that I presented to knows it offers value. They're just not necessarily quite ready yet. But those that are and are picking it up, man, I wish I started with this 15 years ago when I first got into the business. Me too. And, and, and I have such an advantage to me. <laughs> exactly. And I wish I got started too. I just think it's one of those situations where there's a lot of fragmented information. There's a lot of misinformation. And unfortunately, the people that have been presenting the EXP model to myself over the last year and a half presented it in a way that just didn't align with me. And quite frankly, I don't agree with, which is sending a presentation saying, hey, 
you know, is basically disrespectful and not caring about your time, your goals, your visions, and what makes you unique and saying, hey, blanket presentation, watch this, let me know when you want to come join. And I think that's a terrible thing. But, you know, even myself, man, I've been watching you over the last month and truly seeing the difference in your confidence on video, even on these Zoom calls, it's a night and day difference just from putting out consistent content. And I think that helps with confidence. It helps with the ability to, again, think quickly on your feet, handle objections, think of new answers, things like that. So I think becoming a, a force on YouTube is really powerful. And I really like that you had the success. It's not that you needed more money. Everybody can obviously have more money, but they don't necessarily need it. And you still took the opportunity to listen to what we had to say, because we do approach it differently than anybody else that I've talked about. So I think it's interesting because a lot of people that are at these traditional brokerages have this feeling like the brokerage is the name that's bringing them the business. But as you've clearly proven yourself by, you know, with this $3 million listing, people want to work with you for you. It doesn't matter if you're at Remax, C21, Sotheby's, EXP, Redline, wherever, you're the brand. You're the one that's providing the value because there's lots of great agents at every brokerage. There's lots of terrible agents at every brokerage. It doesn't mean if you go with one brokerage, you're going to get a rock star agent every time. And I think people make that misassumption that they're banking on a traditional brick and mortar name in order to give them the credibility. Where as you've seen, if you have the right content, the right presence and the right value, you can create your own credibility and not even be associated with a broker. So Man, I think that's super excited. And, you know, I love seeing how quickly you're growing and especially hearing about these massive deals that you're closing down there. And it's only the beginning because now, you know, we get to run hard together. We get to create new ideas, visions, and think bigger and better than ever before. So before we wrap up, man, is there anything else that you have to say to somebody that might be either starting on YouTube or starting with door knocking those two things that you've been crushing and i'd love to know maybe your advice for somebody that's just about to start both of those look to put it in perspective like you need both of those i mean without a doubt you need both of them in your arsenal right now and i know you know we're in the pandemic where yeah you can't go door knocking but you know what you can be getting prepared right now look another reason why i'm so invested in the door knocking and bringing this scalability social media platform model to my business is because my parents are agents too and they're at a big brokerage Cobo banker and guess what my parents are in their 70s and 80s and i love them to death and sorry dad i know you're hating me because i broadcasted that because you got mad at me last time but you know what i don't want to be working unless i still love the business at that age you know if i love the business so be it i'm happy to do deals until i'm 100 but i want to be doing it because i enjoy it for the right reason and i'm financially able to do whatever I want, spend time with my family. I've got two kids. I want to be flexible. I want to go on trips. I want to hit that Europe trip. And Mike, you know what else I want? I want oh, that. We do. <laughs> but well, you know what? We deserve it though too. And you know, I look at my parents and they've worked so hard and they're still working hard. And fortunately, they have some multiple streams of income that they invested in way early on when my dad was still an attorney. And if they didn't have that though, they'd still be working and then they, they would have to continue to work. And that again, my friends, just takes me back to why the XP model is so crazy amazing right now. And on the note of door knocking and YouTube, look, just do it. And look at it from a perspective of this way. They're both marathons. They both take time. Door knocking is the same thing as YouTube, really, except you're door knocking electronically now. You're looking to get into everyone's house via the YouTube videos. And you're going to but you have to be consistent and you have to keep doing, and you just have to do it, whether you're comfortable, confident or not. The first few, few videos, the first few doors are gonna be the worst, but once you get that under your belt, it's gonna be simple. It's gonna be smooth sailing and you, it's just gonna be routine, part of your habit that you know you gotta get done on a daily. I love it, man. I think that's incredible advice. And I love that you related to the marathon because so many people get started on something. And it's like that image that you see floating around the internet where, you know, one person's digging for diamonds and they're about three feet away and they give up and turn around and the other breaks through because they didn't give up. And so many times, and I've even had this myself where I'm literally exhausted. I'm door knocking. I've been door knocking for two and a half hours. And I look and say, is it really worth going and doing it? And almost every single time I think that in my head and I keep going, I end up getting one of those diamonds where it happens to be somebody that's ready to buy, ready to sell, ready to invest. And it's blown my mind because it's the days that I keep deciding to keep going are the days that I end up hitting this gold and finding the jackpot. So 
guys, you know, this has been incredibly valuable. I think the moral of the story is regardless of what you're deciding to do, you just got to get started, but you have to be consistent. You have to treat it as a marathon and you have to stay invested in the process, but make sure that you do have a process in place. So Eric is a super beast. As you can see, he's dropping multiple videos every single week on his channel. Um, you're going to get a ton of value from this on door knocking, social media, real estate in general, market updates, and everything you're going to want to know. So make sure I'll link Eric's contact information below for Instagram and YouTube. Make sure you go check him out, especially the video where he talks about what he brings when door knocking, which helps with his conversion. So Eric, man, thanks so much for coming on. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much for having me. I was super stoked. And as you know, I was ready yesterday. So obviously, I was super excited to be on. So thanks for having me in any time, brother. You bet, guys. So again, check that stuff out below and we will see you next time.